Welcome, everybody. Good morning, and thank you for attending this year's Memorial Day Parade and Service as we remember those that gave all for the freedom of our country and what our country is based on. Please rise. Dan Strickland will give the invocation at this time. Please remain standing for our national anthem, which will be performed from, where is Sam, Sam I? Is she here, Dan? She's, she's ready to sing. That is Sam? Right here. Right here. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Come on up for after the prayer. Thank you. Which a Pledge of Allegiance uh, will be performed, the, the national anthem will be performed from some, am I saying it right? Samaya Henry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dan? Thank you, Rick. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, lift the hearts of those for whom this holiday is not just diversion, but painful memory of continued deprivation. Bless those whose dear ones have died. We remember with compassion the heartfelt thanks of those who have died serving their country. Amen. 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 Ray? Okay, National Anthem. Do I sing at the mic or? Yes. Please do. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glared the bombs bursting Our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Again, I would like to thank everyone coming. My name is Ray Giasulo. I am the chairman of the Veterans Council of Martin County. I would like to recognize and welcome all of our distinguished community leaders and visitors. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to recognize this day. 
I believe we have uh, Commissioner Campy is here. I was speaking to him. I believe Doug Smith is here from Martin County. Is there anyone else that I might be missing? I don't want to miss. Gail Harold, thank you, Gail. I'm sorry. And also, I believe uh, Representative Snyder is here someplace. Yes. I didn't see John, but I know he's here. And I seen Toby. Toby, I get your last name always wrong, but Overdorf. Overdorf. Thank you, Toby. And now for Stewart City Commissioners, do we know who is here, Miss Mayor? All of them. Oh. Would you? Because <laughs> I'd kill those names. Eula Clark, Stuart Mayor. Our Vice Mayor, Merritt Matheson. Former Mayor, Becky Bruner. Former Mayor, Commissioner, Troy McDonald. And former Mayor, Mike Meyer. Thank you so much, Mayor. And thank you all. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, is Congressman Brian Mast. Congressman. You don't need introductions. Congressman Mast is in his third term representing the 18th con Congressional District of Florida. And I'll have to say I'm in front of him this time. The last time we did a bridge, bridge dedication, he, the people in front of us stepped in ants, if I recall, and they had gotten their legs all bitten up, and I had to follow Brian with the part about, ah, I don't have to worry about the ants. <laughs> all yours. We just call it like we see it. I don't have a long speech this morning, but I have an ask, rather. <laughs> I have an ask of the audience. Memorial Day is about remembering those that gave their lives in service to this country that, that we all love, that we come together this morning to remember. That's how people live on, is how we remember them. So as I give a few remarks right now, my request is this. If you're remembering somebody today, a brother, or a brother and sister in arms, an aunt, an uncle, a spouse, somebody. Come line up right here. You can begin right now. And share with the people here who it is that you are remembering this Memorial Day. Because that's what this day is about. Remembering those that gave their lives, learning from what it is that they sacrificed and becoming a better country, a better community, better individuals because of what we gleaned and learned from their lives. So if you are remembering somebody today on this Memorial Day, then please come line up right here so that you can tell everybody who it is that you remember on this Memorial Day. From World War II, from Korea, from Vietnam, Panama, Kosovo, Bosnia, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, all points in between. That is my ask. Come line up here and share who you're remembering today. And as you come up here, I'll tell you a little bit about who I'm thinking about today. I'm thinking about many. One of my best friends that I lost that I think about every Memorial Day is Sergeant First Class Lance Herman Vogler. He was 29 when he was killed in action, 29 when he was killed in action in Afghanistan with the 75th Ranger Regiment. He was on his 12th deployment at age 29. And what I think we glean from his life is the commitment that our war fighters, our men and women have to this country that year after year after year they spend their time away from their families, missing birthdays and bath times and anniversaries and baseball games and every other good time that so many take for granted with their families. That's one person I remember today. All of you that are lining up, the microphone is yours. Amen. 
lessons. My father, Jack McLend Corporal Jack McClendon, enlisted U.S. Uh, United States Marine Corps, uh, World War II, 1940 through 1947. He served in Iwo Jima, uh, and he was in the 5th Marine Division. They put the flag up. <laughs> Thank you, man. And DAR, all my ancestors in the Revolutionary War. Come on. Get up here. Thank you. I'm remembering Sneaky Snyder it was an auxiliary man on a submarine. We had an explosion underwater. In those days, we didn't come back. We put him in the cooler, and 60 days later, we brought him back. Uh, every year, I think about his life cut short. Thank you. Thank you. I'm remembering my father, Charles Nush. He was in the Marines. Thank you. <laughs> I'm remembering my husband, Daryl Doc Henry, who was in Vietnam in 66 and 67, and what a great veteran he was. He, he loved this, this day. Yes, my dad, um, <laughs> Take a breath. It's okay. Take a breath. What's your dad's name? Christopher. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Christopher Goski. Special Operations Command, MARSOC. Seven combat tours died in the line of duty, June 2012. Army First Sergeant Michael Goski's twin brother. Seven combat tours of duty died four years later broken heart god bless our military god bless america god bless all of us for being here I'm here remembering Pete Hamill, my best friend who made it out of Vietnam, then died from Agent Orange. I'm remembering my uncle, Mr. Quentin Hess, died in Enzo Bay, Beachhead. I'm remembering my roommates from the Air Force Academy, class of 1970, that gave their lives in Vietnam in March of 1972 at NLOC. Lieutenant Arthur Hardy and Lieutenant Michael Blassie, who for 14 years was entombed at the tomb of the unknown soldier until DNA revealed that Mike was Mike. And they brought him home to St. Louis and buried him in his hometown. I remember them. I remember in my uncle Ronnie Latour, who served in the Korea War, one and two, who was a very strong gentleman in Karen, and I also remember my cousin Ronnie Sharlin who served in war career he got two purple medals and the two purple medals didn't mean anything to him what meant to him is serving for his country my brother Randy he also and those are the people that I'm remembering today God bless everyone I'm remembering my husband the love of my life who was 30 years army Vietnam, he also died of Agent Orange. God bless America. You trying to say Lou Short? <laughs> short timer. Uh, I'm not going to bother to try and remember all the names. I remember my dad, Naval, Avi Naval Aviation, World War II, and uh, the nine guys we lost on a river patrol boat in, in uh, Vietnam. 
Yes, sir. I'm remembering my father, PFC Michael Stabinski, 36th Division, World War II, fought through uh, Italy, France, and Germany, uh, recipient of two bronze stars. Uh, oh. He was my hero. Damn right. And yours too. I'm remembering two brothers, my great uncles, Ernest K. Turner, who was killed in action in July of 1950 in Korea, and his brother, uh, Master Sergeant Day Turner, 80th Infantry, killed in action February 1945, Medal of Honor recipient. I remember my friends and comrades And the jungles of Vietnam. They were killed. God bless them and their families. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. I would like to remember <coughs> Carl J. Reed from Oklahoma, killed February 24th, 1968, and battled away. I'd like to remember Major Glenn Belcher, pilot that I served with, shut down over Laos, December 31st, 1967. And I'd like to remember my father, who uh, served in World War II, made the Normandy invasion, lived, shot three times, came home and gave me and my sister a wonderful life. Amen. Amen. I'd like to remember uh, two cousins of mine, both Vietnam vets. Uh, they returned home from the war, Waylon and Skip. Um, Skip died of Agent Orange just a few years ago, and my cousin Waylon uh, committed suicide. I'd like to remember all those pilots and crewmen in the South Pacific, uh, 42nd Bomb Group, 390th Bomb Squadron, uh, who, who did their all. And uh, at a few years ago, there were 19 of us left, and now there's just me. Oh, Bless you. Thank you. I'd like to remember high school friends of mine. George Dow, who was in a neighbor, neighborhood, uh, he was a year ahead of me in high school. <clears throat> he got picked off the last day of shooting in Korea. He was a Marine. And also his, his buddy, Ronnie Lavasa. And I would also like to honor, a, or I, I think about it all the time. Orion Walker was a year behind me in high school. He was in the Army in Korea, went to college. When I went to college, got a commission. And he passed away the second, the la two weeks before the fighting stopped in Vietnam, and he died as a prisoner. And I think of those two guys. Yes, sir. God bless you. I like to remember my friend, Lieutenant Danny Dye, who was killed in action in Vietnam. 
I'd also think that we should all stand up and give a sound round of applause to our dear friend, Congressman Brian Mast. Thank you for all you do. I'd like to remember, as I do every day, my wonderful husband, Alfred B. Pond, who died two years ago. And after 20 years of service to the military, and he devoted his life to the VFW in Jensen Beach. He will always be in my mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're remembering two World War II veterans today. My dad, who flew uh, B-17s, B-24s, and B-29s and my father-in-law, Alex Barzani, who flew off of the Jeep carriers in the Battle of Lady Gulf. He flew 75 combat missions and made it home to take care of all of us. So our thanks to them. And Brian, thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to remember my dad, Frank Arena, who was drafted at 18 years old and got uh, up to the ship that he was going on for the U.S. Navy, and he had his fishing poles over his shoulder, and the captain said, sir, where do you sail, or where do you think you're going? You're going to a war, not vacation. And he served as a mechanic on the flat tops in the uh, Pacific. Uh, my father-in-law, whom I've never uh, met, was in the uh, European theater uh, working in telecommunications, John W. Nietzsche. My Uncle Joe Arena uh, worked on the Queen Elizabeth, which was uh, commandeered, I guess, for the uh, US uh, helping in the war effort. And my Uncle uh, Joe uh, Falcia, who also worked in Europe. So I thank all of those members of my family today. Today is each year, I remember my great Uncle Ralph Hodges. I never had the privilege to meet him, except my mother kept an obituary from him, which said that he was uh, injured on the North Africa cam campaign. He was on his way back to marry his fiance and then was, was uh, killed. I learned more about him as I read the obituary that said he died when he was 21 years old, having served for four years. So he joined when he was 16 years old to defend this wonderful country that we have. His grandmother, who raised him, wouldn't sign for him. He had to go to the mayor to sign for him to join up, and he gave his life for all of, uh, of us. He never had the chance to have a wife or kids. And as Brian Mass says, when we remember those that they live on, and not just for those that gave their lives, but for the wives, the spouses, the sons and the daughters, and the grandmothers that gave the ultimate sacrifice as well, to raise and then to give their loved ones for us, for us and for the world to be free. God bless you, Uncle Ralph Hodges. I want to remember uh, my high school buddy, Tommy Tedesco. Died in the sixth grade. Thank you.
I remember my brothers, Jack, Steve, Tony, all served in Vietnam, all are gone. Jack was killed in action December 31st, 1968. Thank you. I remember my grandpa, Joseph Waldrop, who served in Vietnam. I'd like to uh, remember Major Larry Balgus. Larry and I spent a year together in Baghdad in 2006. And then as soon as we got back to Fort Bragg, he trained up with another unit and went to Afghanistan. And uh, Larry was the kind of guy, he would play tic-tac-toe over the internet with his kids every night. He would mark an X and email it to his daughters and they would mark their X and send it back to him the next day. And Larry uh, went to Afghanistan and had a meeting with Pakistani and Afghani officials. And after the meeting, the Pakistani uh, people he was meeting with gunned him down. So I'd like to remember him from May 14, 2007. And I'd also like to remember Jim, Carl, David, Brian, and all my fellow veterans who died by suicide since they returned home. I'm just remembering my boys that didn't make it back from uh, Zabul and Helmand provinces over in Afghanistan. I'd like to remember uh, my friends that I served with, Jared Van Alst, Bill Brown, and Daniel Adams. Thank you. I'd like to remember First Lieutenant Terry Plunk uh, from the 82nd Airborne Division that died in 1991 at Desert Storm while clearing minefields. Uh, he was a tremendous friend. And, uh, I would like to remember today my father, Edward Lewis Shepard, first private class in the Marines. And I hope he was proud of me today for finally giving back and to the Marine Corps League. And they have no idea how much they've done for me to keep his memory alive. So thank you all and God bless you. I'm here to remember everybody that gave all and those that made it back. Anybody that served for us, it doesn't matter if I know them or not. We deserve to give them the best for our freedom that we got. Thank you. Yeah, I'm remembering uh, a very dear friend, 96 years old, died a year ago, uh, shot down twice in the Pacific. And I'm also remembering uh, my grandfather, uh, who s uh, survived Anzio, he passed away about five years ago. I'm also remembering my fourth generation back grandfather, Jay Dennis, who died of a musket wound under, w under General Grant during the Civil War. And also remembering my fifth generation, Jay Dennis, who died of a musket wound under George Washington in our Independence War. I'm here to remember and honor all those who served our country, but since you mentioned, I want to mention Marcel Cortajena, who passed away within just over a year, who was very active here in, in veterans uh, uh, committees here in our, in our city and in the Jewish war veterans, and I want to remember him specifically. Quickly, before I give it back to Congressman Mass, I want to memorize a good friend of mine who passed away when I was in the service. He was my bow hook, Ricky Castro, who died in my arms. Thank you. I'm up here to remember my grandfather, Woodrow Wilson, and my uncle, Roger Wilson. Thank y'all. Are there any alibis? 
All right. You heard it. Their fathers, their mothers, aunts, uncles, grandfathers, grandmothers, friends. The only way that we learn from them is to say their names and remember their lives. They're not just names on a school. They're not just names of highways. They're people we went to school with, people we chewed dirt with, people we were in jungles with, on mountaintops with, in deserts with, and so many other places with. And I hope that we all remember them every single day of our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Mass. I would also like to thank Tony Reese, a retired Navy, former Martin County Veteran Service Officer for leading our parade in this year as Grand Marshal. You can learn more about Tony and his accomplishments in the program. As much as Tony doesn't want to talk, he doesn't want to take the limelight away from anybody. Thank you to the VFW Post 10132 for our honor guard. Martin County TV and all of their AV support. Also and, also and always a great job to everyone involved with Stewart Parade and everyone that participated in this year's parade. A very special thank you to a good friend of mine, Jim Reardon, who organized this event this year and many other years. <laughs> At this time, we will conduct our wreath lane ceremony and ecology report. Please rise for the playing of taps and gun salute. Am I doing that out of order, Dan? I just want to make sure I didn't mess up here. Am I right? I'm good, they said. Okay, I'm sorry. Please ride for the playing of taps and gun salute by the VFW Post 10132 Honor Guard. Forty-one ninety-four, Stewart, Florida. VFW Post, ten thousand sixty-six, Jensen Beach, Florida. Go ahead, call the names. Stewart, VFW four one nine four. Right after they shoot. Stuart BFW 414 lost four members and auxiliary members, Galen Parker, Jay Massey, Bruce Holmes, and Carol Christ. Jensen Beach auxiliary members lost this year were Barnett, Barney. Take your time between each name, and he's going to ring each one. Okay. Eddie, Jeannie. Riley, Carol. <laughs> Zubin Holler. Zubin Holler. Tommy. Thank you. 
VFW Post 10,066 lost 24 veterans, five of which were in their 90s, and one uh, that was our benefactor and gave us our land was 100 years old. They are Walter Blanchard, Timothy Breyer, Norman Cabana, Sal De Palma, Paul Driscoll, Richard Garrow, Bernie Gowan, Charles Harvey, Albert Huey, Robert Campert, Ernest Miller, Albert Molinari, Gerald Mullen, David Newberry, Kenneth Olson, Galen Parker, Joseph Pereira, Albert Pond, George Quinn, Dominic Scarletto, James Cyberling, Charles Tilton, Beryl Winks, and Dorothy Zanelli. Good afternoon. Hall Bryan Post VFW 10132 lost 13 veterans this year. Gerald Hefferman. Larry Little. Fred Eckerson. Richard McKeon. James Glover. John Val. Daniel Robertson, Charles Lewis, Clive Collins, Alan Schroeder, John Storr, Pasquales Mazzelli. Thank you. Wait for me. The Auxiliary, we are humbled by the loss of our members who have served from the heart for our veterans. Vivian Tooth, Catherine Bradley, Donna Mae Russell, Sandra Brown, Trish Harris, Miss Kaler, Jenny Eddy, Shirley Hogan, Brett Taylor. Amen. Legion Post 126, Jensen Beach. <clears throat> Don't name it, time for your American Legion Post 126 lost 18 members and two auxiliary members. Our two auxiliary members were longtime president. Michelle Duclaw Parandosi and Kathy Long. Our members were John Lasher, Joe Seeley, Curtis Stover, Joe Bukowski, Gerald DeFresny, Don Arnold, Richard Ballou, Frank O'Leary, Francis Rudella, Arthur Swanson, James Taylor, William Trago, John Turner, 
Jack Schneider, Barney Barnett, Robert Wells Bacher, Harry Van Fossen, and Bill McDade. And bets post 92 in Jensen Beach lost seven members. John Bolster, Bill McDade, Joe Bukowski, Joseph Seeley, Marjorie Bethelsbauer, and Tom Barton. Auxiliary 92 in Jensen Beach lost three members. We lost Cheryl Bear, Sue Cox, and, wait, and D. I can't even say it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't, I'm sorry. And D. McPearson. Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 10, 41. After the year we just had, Chapter 1041 is happy to report all present are accounted for. Corporal Justin J. Wilson, Detachment 1045, all members present and accounted for. We do remember our namesake, Lance Corporal Justin J. Wilson, who passed away in combat in Helmand Province in Afghanistan. Stuart Jensen Lodge, number 1870, lost 19 members. Paul F. Jackson, Robert F. Spetz, Priscilla Huff, Richard Lemieux, William Lersch, Richard Glossel, life member, Joseph Ziza, Catherine Bassett, Diane Lang, Arthur McCarthy, life member, James Sawyer, life member, Zoltan Murray, life member, Catherine Rail, Jerry Furlong, George Brewer, James Petrovsky, Jean Spots, Dr. Nathan 
McFarland, life member, and Paul Sheehan. How Patioki Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, in memory of all the patriots who got independence for us and started this country, and for all the patriots that followed after them. God bless them. Father McGivney, 4th Degree Assembly, number 1764, Knights of Columbus, Stewart, Florida. The faithful departed. Anthony Cataline. Francis Collins. Lanny Garcia. John Gorman. Bob McGarvey. Pasquale Pat Mascali. Dennis Lamedica. Andy Nowicki. Pat O'Gorman, Ed Tierney, Joseph Tranfo. May they rest in peace and may God bless America. Thank you for Sir, all present and accountable. Thank you. Start heading up to the podium. Sam Dusty Rhodes will now administer the benediction, benediction. And I just wanted to say a little bit quickly about Sam. He's a World War II, 96 year old gentleman. There is a monument in the park, which is right next to the road to Victory Military Museum. I would like you all after to stop by. Sam is going to be there. He's one of the sole survivors of that ship, CV-13. Uh, they lost 922 souls. And Sam would be glad to tell anybody about it. And let me tell you, it's very interesting. So after everything is done for the ceremony, please head over to that direction. Sam, closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we deem this a fitting time to pay our respects to our departed comrades as we stand with bowed heads in reverence to them. Let us remember the good deeds they accomplished. Let us also revere them as good soldiers who fought the good fight in a just cause. Let us silently pray for peace, the peace that passes all understanding, and let us in mind and soul consecrate our hearts and lives to the real America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the America worth fighting for. As we stand in silence to our departed comrades, may we sincerely say, may their souls rest in peace. Let us also remember the POWs and the MIAs still unaccounted for from the wars and conflicts. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. At this point of the program, I'd like to introduce you to you, the mayor of Stewart. I knew your name, Tula. I'm just taking my time. Tula Clark, Eula. And she's going to say a few words about Charles Tyson III. And then following her, there will be a few other speakers. We'll introduce their names as they come up followed by the bagpipers, which are going to head to that pole for a small ceremony. 
uh, for Claudia or Claudia Tyson Hamill is going to speak for her brother who this award is for Charles Tyson III. Thank, thank you. you mayor thank you so much as I rise and I'm here in front of you today it is to give thanks for those who have served our country and more importantly to give thanks to our city fathers our city commissioners who thought it not robbery to prepare and provide for this distinguished services memorial which is right as you enter where the flag is and we'll be doing a dedication today. This memorial was first instituted on Memorial Day of 2016 and it was done to honor Lawrence, uh, U.S. Army Corporal Lawrence Larry Wayne Brown a native of Stewart who had served in Vietnam. And this was because we wanted to start doing something very special. And I must say, Congressman Mass, you did something very special today to ask folks to come up and to say who they remembered. Thank you so much. Thank you. This whole memorial is a very special design with the flag arched at our entrance there. And we just ask as you enter and as you leave to always remember not just why we're here today, but always service for our country. Our local veterans, we thank you for everyone on the Veterans Committee. Thank you for everything. The sculpture has been done and has continued from 2016, 2017 especially, and 2018 by Eduardo Gomez Rojas. Is Mr. Gomez here today? He's not here today, but he started that and we've had um, several sculptures and again today we have a new one. Uh, in, in February, in, in 2017, we honored Private Harold R. Johns from World War I. In 2018, we honored uh, Cap, uh, John Mark Matthews, who's a World War II hero. And in 2019, we honored Aaron C. Vaughn from the U.S. Navy SEAL. Today, our Distinguished Service Memorial will be in memory of our dear departed, Mr. Charles Floyd um, Tyson. Tyson, sorry, Mr. Tyson. I'm leaving all the names and all the very details of the memorial to my team who will be telling you everything about them. We just want to say that the city of Stewart is so proud to have this memorial in our memorial park and we are so proud to have you come out to Memorial Park today to share with us as we hear from Alice Lockhart, Jim Nowitzki, and the sister who will be presenting and removing the plaque in the memorial, Miss Alice Lockhart, our local, one of our local historians. Afternoon, everybody. Hello. Um, also, not only being a historian, but I am of a military family. I had not only my father, a 30-year Air Force captain, but my mother, who was lieutenant in the Women's Army Corps and served at the Nuremberg Trials. She was an attorney. So I have that background, too. One of the things I want to point out about Memorial Day, to remember it started off as Decoration Day, and that was actually first observed May 30th. 1868 at, Nash, at the Arlington Cemetery. <laughs> at the Arlington Cemetery was the first thing. And they chose the date of the 30th. They thought no other holidays are around that, so let's do the 30th. And it remained like that for years. Then it was changed to be the last Monday of May so that you could all have a long weekend too. So that became official 50 years ago today. Today's the 50th anniversary that it was changed to be the last Monday of May. So that's why we're celebrating it the 31st. 
But the person we're going to honor with the Distinguished Service Award Memorial was started by the City of Stewart. And so we have this to recognize our local uh, men and women who spent time here, grew up here, went to school here, and then served their country and unfortunately never made it back. The one today is Charles Tyson III of the family. He was a 1968 Martin County High School graduate. Yeah, class of 68. He entered the Marines then right after graduation. He trained in North Carolina, then went to California before being sent off to Vietnam on March 17, 1969. He was a private first class. He was in the 1st Marine Division, the 3rd Battalion of the 5th Marines of M Company. His unit conducted many search and clear operation and patrols throughout the Vietnam provinces that he was assigned. It was on June 21st, 1969, his patrol was performing a search and clear operation four miles from his base when the enemy was encountered and suddenly a volley of rifle fire was experienced when bullets then struck 19-year-old Charles. He was hit in the head and in the body. He died a short time afterwards. His body was returned to Martin County and on July 9th, a full military funeral was held at Fernhill. The flag of his coffin was presented to his parents. What is especially astonishing about Charles is not the life that he gave, which was there astonishing by itself, but he loved Martin County. He loved this community. And he made sure that in his will, for any money that he got from being in the service of the military, that money would go into scholarships at Martin County High School for students. And he wanted a special plaque and memorial put in the school to recognize any past or future other Martin County students that died in the service of their country. Right now there are eight names on that list, of course, including Charles. And the only thing is, there are more names to be added. We just need more money to have those put on there. So this is a special day that we remember Charles for what he gave, what he wanted, and what it was accomplished. The other people that are going to be speaking is this former supervisor, superintendent of education, Jim Nowitzki, who served for 21 years here. And so Jim was there at those ceremonies. He can tell you firsthand what happened about those ceremonies when the, everything was turned over and dedicated at that time. Okay, Jim. Thank you very much. It is a sincere honor and privilege to come here today and join with you in the remembrance of these wonderful people that sacrificed their lives for their country. Charles Tyson III was one of those. But he does stand out for a different reason. And I'll go into that reason because there are many memorials that are given after the person has passed in their name. Charles had a vision that was a little different than most and I'm going to share with you that vision. In order to understand it, you first of all have to understand the community in which he lived. Martin County, right after the war, had a growth in the next decade of about 8%, up to 16,000 people. A great number of those people that came to this community were retired service, not retired, but service people who had, war, had been in the Second World War and those in the community. It was a traffic place for lots of veterans up and down the coast of this country. And so those veterans seeing that this was a wonderful place to be came and retired here or worked here, actually started business and raising their families. They, like all veterans, knew that after taking their oath, which was to serve and protect, were not excused from that oath just because they were discharged. And so that group of men that came here really gave this community a new vibrance. And that vibrance was felt through the churches, through the civic organizations, and through also elected office. And many of those veterans served in office and did wonderful things and kept the community in balance. During a time at which others in the country were burning the flag and desecrating statues, the students at Martin County won the 
Freedom Foundation Award, a very prestigious award during that very time. Other things were happening that those veterans were responsible for, and they gave light to the community. Part of it was every single Memorial Day, there was a, at 11 o'clock, silence in the, all the classrooms, and then the meaning, the true meaning, of what Memorial Day meant. And that was, the ultimate sacrifice was that for defending your country. The students then responded in various ways also. If you might remember, you go, go to the beach over here, and you have Tiger Shores. The students at that time raised the funds and bought the access, the 100-foot access to Tiger Shores. And that was kind of the mentality of things that were going on. We had every branch of the service and every academy had students from Martin County. Uh, they felt their need to protect and defend and also to serve. And that was kind of the hallmark. Well, in 1969, I received a letter, a copy of a letter in my office that I felt immediately I needed to share with the students of Martin County High School. We called an assembly in the gymnasium and all the students attended. And I will attempt to now re recreate that letter that I gave and s said to the students of the school. It went something like this. Today was really a tough day. The group that came back, very few of them, most of them were lost in the action, mortally wounded or killed. Our commanding officer has told us tonight to sit down and write a letter to our parents, just in case we, we didn't return. So Charles did as he was told. And he said, Mom, Dad, I don't know whether I'm gonna make it through, but I want you to know forever that I have loved you and loved you dearly. And the next sentence was one that really caused a deafening of silence in the room. I want to have a scholarship with the money that you will receive from the United States Army upon my death. Every student in there knew exactly what he meant at that moment. You think about it. Here is a young man, 19 years of age, about to go on one of the worst missions you could possibly do, and he was thinking of the students at Martin County High School, and they knew it, and they responded. They showed the respect, and the room was absolutely quiet. The other day I had the opportunity of talking to the young man who was the first scholarship recipient. That young man went to medical school, became a physical therapist, and worked in the hospital for 25 years providing service and help for those with disabilities and injuries and operations and restoring them to their health. This was what Charles was all about. He named that scholarship, he wanted that scholarship because if he could not serve and he could not perform the duty, he wanted to be sure someone would carry on. And so today, 52 years later, we are happy and saddened by having to <clears throat> remember Charles giving his ultimate sacrifice, but also we can also not only have that feeling of ultimate sacrifice, he also left service. And we can applaud him for the legacy that he left. And that's why today I am happy to be here and be for the opening of the plaque on the uh, remembrance for all to know. Now they all won't know that story, but if you can tell people, the students at Martin County in that year know that story and know it well. And we love Charles, appreciate what he did, and now what's continuing to go on because of his legacy. Thank you. Robert, did you want to say a couple words? 
I'll, I'll take care. I got it. Hi, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Charles' sister, Claudia, and uh, I was so blessed to have him for a brother. Um, Charles was born in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, my poor mother was five months pregnant, and I celebrated my fourth birthday on a ship in the North Atlantic. So when we got to Germany, we lived in a Schaffenberg, and my baby brother was something else. He was a beautiful child. If you were a girl, you would have envied his eyelashes. He was so pretty. Um, he loved Stuart. Um, when he died, um, he died on the 21st of June. And it was an eternity and so hard on us. And I know all you service people that lost anyone overseas knows what we went through. He wasn't returned to us until about July the 6th or 7th. And then we buried him on the 9th. Uh, it was an eternity. But um, he is so missed. I loved him so much. He was my baby. When he was born in Frankfurt, I thought he was my doll. I would sneak in and get him out of the crib, throw him in the crib. Uh, somebody else did the same thing. Throw him in the stroller and push him around. Um, the day that he left for Vietnam, he came up to my house to see me and I was so anxious but I was getting frustrated because he wasn't there. I, want, I was selfish. I wanted to spend every minute I could with him. And I didn't realize it, but he had stopped in Vero Beach. I lived in Felsmere, Florida at the time. I was married. But he had stopped in Vero, and I didn't wear it today, and bought me a necklace that he gave me. And that was the last thing that he ever really gave me, and that was the last time I ever saw him, I remember sitting in a chair. Well, I was actually in his lap. I was all over him. But um, there was something else I was going to tell you about him. I can't think right now. Um, I don't know whether to thank everyone now while I have a microphone. Or, OK. All right, I'll wait and thank everybody. But thank you all for coming out for Charles today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, quickly one closing pause. I just want to give one quick thank you to the gentleman sitting right where I'm pointing, if everybody could see me. His name is Steek, Steve Barlock. I could never say it right. He is 103 years old, and he served in World War II in the Coast Guard. Let's all salute him, followed by the bagpipes right down the center. And please allow everybody on the stage to go down that way first. Thank you all.